How's it going everyone? Today I have once again more news for you. There have been quite a few interesting developments from quite a few different companies, going into both AR and VR. That and of course we have some Oculus Quest news as well. So as usual, in case you guys enjoyed this one, make sure to smack that little red button down below and let's get right into it. So first of all, we're going to start off with some Quest news. Meta has released the Quest hand tracking showcase for the Unreal Engine. In case you guys don't know what Unreal Engine is, it is a game development application. A new sample project from Meta for Epic's Unreal Engine gives developers the building blocks for more robust open air hand interactions in VR. If you own a Meta Quest, you can test the Oculus hand gameplay showcase for Unreal on App Lab now. Just leave the Oculus Touch controllers behind. Most virtual reality content is made for either Unity or Unreal, with the latter being the work of Fortnite creator Epic Games. Unreal is sometimes the engine of choice for some of the bigger budget game projects, and Epic CEO Tim Sweeney is one of the biggest proponents of the so-called metaverse concept. So yeah, as you can see, Unreal Engine was used by Fortnite, and quite a few other applications as well. They are also the creators of the MetaHumans, which are super realistic virtual human beings that we will supposedly be able to use as NPCs and characters, or they're already available, but I haven't seen them being used in too many apps just yet. They're incredibly realistic and just super cool. I can only imagine how good hand tracking would be with a super realistic avatar. So in case you guys are developers or just interested in that kind of stuff, there you go. It's interesting to see the Quest hand tracking technology move on and allow for greater compatibility. I love hand tracking and I love the benefits it gives me not having to grab controllers instantly. So that's really cool. And talking about hand tracking, Finger Gun VR is, I would say, quite a few people's childhood dream. You could probably already guess what it is, but just in case you can't, let me tell you. Use your bare hands to battle waves of robotic-like extraterrestrial characters in this western-themed VR game. Originally announced back in November of 2020, Finger Gun is a wave-based first-person shooter coming soon to MetaQuest headsets. But here's what's interesting about Finger Gun. Instead of using your touch controllers to interact, the game transforms your own two hands into a pair of deadly revolvers. Solvers. Pew pew. I mean, I think this is a really cool concept. I do, as a matter of fact, remember doing this in the past. I mean, it was something that we all did at least once, I think. And turning that into a game and making that concept into a reality, it's just, it's so cool. It really is. It shows you how hand tracking technology can bring a game from the past, something that was completely not real, just just a childhood game, into being real. Like, pretty much real. It's, it's virtual real, so it's real. It's so unbelievably cool. Anyway, Finger Gun has have now released their teaser trailer and are hoping to release in 2022 coming to both the Oculus Quest 1 and the Oculus Quest 2, or Meta Quest 1 and Meta Quest 2. Moving on. The Half Dive headset has finally hit Kickstarter. If you guys don't know what the Half Dive headset is, check out my video on it right up here, but essentially it's this really interesting concept of a headset, or maybe it's now real, considering it's on Kickstarter, where you lay down on your bed and be able to use VR laying down. It has fans to produce wind sensations and just incredibly good audio apparently. It has some really cool features that people are comparing to Full Dive, which is, you know, quite futuristic. The Japanese Kickstarter, Diver X, has finally launched a Kickstarter for Half Dive, a unique VR headset that's designed to be used while laying down, drawing some pretty clear inspirations from Sword Art Online. Half Dive isn't a brain computer interface like SAO's Nerve Gear. However, it does promise to let users play Steam VR games like VR Chat and experience some pretty interesting object interaction via its tethered force feedback solution too. The Kickstarter launched today and is asking for 20 million yen or around 176,000 United States dollars. The project has already garnered over $70,000, putting it at around one third of the way there. DiverX is offering two distinct models through the Kickstarter, what it calls the Half Dive Minimal model starting at $750 and the Half Dive Basic model starting at $1,050. Interesting. You'd think that they might want to call the more expensive ones something a little bit more than basic. But anyway, it's there for anyone interested. And of course, I'm going to leave a link to all these articles down below in case you want to check out the Kickstarter. Now, talking about new headsets coming to the market, this one is going to interest quite a few of you Linux fans out there. And I know there's quite a few of you. I myself have been using Linux for development here and there, but it's not my main OS. Simula One is a standalone VR headset running Linux desktop, and its Kickstarter is going live in January. Linux desktop on a 
VR headset. Interesting. Developers looking for a unique Linux-based workstation might be interested to hear that Simula VR, the startup behind its own open source VR Linux distro, is creating a standalone VR headset that aims to offer just that. So I guess this is pushing along the lines of, in virtual reality, you are able to create an unlimited amount of virtual displays, allowing you for pretty much unlimited productivity. I mean, if you can focus on all those displays. I mean, it's really cool. You know, the ability to create a massive TV without actually owning one, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Same goes for productivity. I mean, things like this could make monitors in the future obsolete. If we can have glasses thin enough where they are comfortable enough to wear, where we don't feel fatigue wearing them over long periods of time. We could project virtual displays into a single position in the real world and not have to worry about buying actual screens. A lot of people think this won't happen and real life displays won't become extinct. And honestly, I don't know where I am myself in this train of thought. I mean, I still enjoy sitting down in front of the TV with like a family member or a group of friends, but the same could be done in front of a virtual screen. Again, not sure where I sit on this, but would love to hear your opinion down below. Dub the Simula One. The standalone VR headset isn't meant for gaming. Rather, it's targeted at programmers, software engineers, developers, or essentially anyone who uses Linux for work-related stuff. For now, the company has mentioned basic features and has also shown off a prototype of the Simula One. It's certainly capturing the cool retro vibe that's ostensibly taking inspiration from early home computers such as the Magnavox Odyssey, Atari 2600, and Apple II. So far, we know of a few definite things about the Simula One. The headset is said to come with a detached x86 compute pack, which will arrive with the company's Simula 1 open source VR window manager installed by default. The very same which can be installed and run on Steam VR headsets such as the Valve Index and HTC Vive Pro. So there you guys go. In case you're interested to hear more about this, I'll leave a link to this article down below. For anyone interested, Demio has posted a pretty clear roadmap of what they're planning on doing with the game for 2022. I have loved Demio and loved playing it. It seriously brought the family together, playing VR together. Together, and apparently its flat screen version releases next April and PvP has been announced. The game was already really cool and interesting as is, but them adding more features like this just makes it even better. Demio's third party campaign, Root of Evil, is out today, but there's plenty more plans for the tabletop game in 2022. Developer Resolution Games confirmed today that its long awaited flat screen version of the game, simply named Demio PC Edition, will be released on April 7th, 2022. As previously announced, this version of the game will offer crossplay with PC VR and Quest users, so it's easier to get friends into the experience. Demio is a multiplayer game, so the more people you can have in it, the more friends you can have playing the game, the better. Even though I do think that playing it on PC will lose out some of those qualities of being able to play it on VR headsets. It's just so incredibly cool to play this game in VR. And finally, I have some interesting things for you guys in regards to AR. Google is building an augmented reality OS for a new AR device. So Google has been working on quite a few things recently. In fact, I'm actually checking out their Android 12 OS on my phone right now. Not that that has anything to do with anything, but it's just really cool seeing how far they've progressed. Google is hiring several positions working on an augmented reality OS for an AR device, reported by 9to5Google. To quote, our team is building these software components that can control and manage hardware on our augmented reality AR products. These are software products that run on AR devices and are closest to the hardware. As Google adds products to the AR portfolio, the OS Foundations team is the very first software team to work with new hardware. So as you can see, Google is planning on adding products to their portfolio. This is really cool. I mean, they've tried this before with the Google Glass. That was kind of a flop, even though I did find it quite cool at the time. But it seems that they are working on things in the background. And who knows when we're going to be seeing some really cool Google AR products, which is good news for anybody that doesn't want to be buying into the Facebook ecosystem of AR devices. But on another note, it seems that Huawei, yes, the company that was first kicked off of the Google platform entirely and stopped from using Google Play services on their phones, they have teased their first glasses with Harmony OS. Harmony OS being their new mobile phone OS after they were kicked off of the Google platform. Huawei has released some details on another new product for its increasingly large-scale event later on in December of 2021. It is the OEM's largest generation of smart glasses. They are speaker-enabled wearables like their predecessors, although they will ship with Huawei's own software. Huawei is no stranger to the release of smart glasses. However, the next generation line is now slated to be the first to run Harmony OS. The OEM asserts that the wearables will deliver intelligent life with an assistant. Okay, so this is interesting. It seems that this will not necessarily be AR glasses, but mostly 
right? Smart glasses. How that is going to run an OS? I don't know, because you don't get to see anything. Of course, there is an OS happening in the background, always, but it's not really as visible to the viewer. So what changes they can make to make it stand out is going to be quite interesting. I do have a pair of smart glasses myself, made by Razer, with the Google Assistant built in, and I absolutely love them. I do actually use them on a daily basis and take them out whenever I leave the house and it's sunny. They have changed the way I listen to music and just interact with people, not having to block everyone out when I want to have some background music. But it's interesting to see more and more products like this coming onto the market, including AR glasses. I'm personally super excited for those AR glasses. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. If you guys liked the video, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below and check out our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporting this channel. You guys helped me out a ton, buying better gear, and just overall paying for the little things here and there. So thank you so much for that. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that does not put a huge ad on your body. And as usual, in case you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.